answer one question for me. I uh, may be a little square. I, I don't know what Beatles means. Um, it just, just means, means us. <laughs> he was the last to join, but many say he was the key to making the Beatles the best known band in history. I know you mean Born Richard Starkey, but the world would know him forever as Ringo, Ringo Starr. Childhood in England saw him abandoned by his father, but sheltered by his mother through several staggering illnesses that almost cost him his life. Music became his focus. Playing with a couple of rock bands in Liverpool, he became a drummer of interest to others, like a rising early 60s Liverpool band called The Beatles. And the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah, 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 yeah. At 75, he's one of only two Beatles left. He's still producing records, is about to go on tour across North America with his all-star band. And last week, he released, with profits destined for charity, a coffee table book stuffed full of personal mementos from the last 50-plus years. The pictures are all his. Either he took them or he owns them, and they are page turners. Ringo has his own rules. He doesn't do a lot of interviews, is said to tire of those who ask about the Beatles, hasn't signed autographs in years, and doesn't shake hands, bumps elbows instead. Hey, well done, Peter. Yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> but he still has perhaps his greatest trademark, a wonderful sense of humor. Oh, he's got your camera, probably the good lens. <laughs> I sat down with Ringo the other day in Los Angeles for a little chat at his favorite bookstore. That was good. That was very good. There was a very good sound to that. Does it bother you that people like me still want to talk about that? I mean, it's not like that yeah. eight, nine, ten years is all you've contributed. There was yeah, yeah. before, and there's been a lot yeah, since, yeah. and there continues to be now. Yeah. No, it, it doesn't bother me because I've decided to come here today. <laughs> and plug my book. Which is, which is a lot about excuse that. Excuse me, this is what we're talking about. Uh, and yeah, it always goes. My, my joke is that, you know, every interview, I've got a book, I've got a record, th this case. Oh, you've got a book out, Ringo. How's Paul? <laughs> it's the second question. <laughs> How is Paul? Yeah. yeah, he's good. He's good. I was with him last weekend, and he's good. Um, I'm loving this book. Oh, good. And I'm trying to figure out how you kept all this stuff. Well, so am I. <laughs> you know, the first thing I found was this box of postcards that the assistant I had then, because I used to say to John Paul and George, send me a card. And they would send me cards. And From play. wherever they were. Yeah, and I'd just throw them in the drawer or whatever. Anyway, she, in her wisdom, put them all in envelopes in this box. I had no idea. And then I found a box of negatives photographs, and then, you know, my mother died, God rest her soul, and she had a couple of small cases of stuff, because she collected everything. I didn't know this. But you you were finding stuff you didn't even know you had. We didn't know. I did not know. And stuff that you'd, you'd done yeah. and, and didn't realize yeah, yeah. you still had in your possession. No. You know, I just had not seen it for years and years and years. The camera that you must have used to take a lot of those early pictures, because yeah. you were kind of the original yeah. photographer in the group, right? You I were, was. You were, well, we all had cameras, but it's... But you were... You because started. of this book, it looks like I did it all. Right. Do you I, remember what kind of camera you were using? I mean... I had a, an icon, and I've still got the body, and right. I've still got the big fisheye lens. There's the pictures in there, the fisheye with the boys in India. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot more than a little brownie. It was like a real it, camera. India, it was. Let me show you. The, I, I, yeah, yeah. There's so many great pictures, but this is from the uh, Rory Storm and the Hurricane days, That's right? 1960. I mean, obviously, there's a great picture of you in a mm. kind of another era, the yeah, hairstyle, yeah. a different era. But it's the poster in the background. Yeah. That tells the story, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you're you're on you a poster. Tell them on well, you're on you're, you're, the Beatles. Yeah. Not you yet. Nah, it's no. The Beatles without no. you. Yeah, yeah. Rory Storm and the Hurricanes with you. The biggest band in Liverpool at the time, Peace and Love. Jerry and the Pacemakers. I know, yeah. He'll never walk alone. Never walk alone. Yeah. Ferry Cross the Mercy. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a, you know, a snapshot into the future in a sure. way, looking at this. Yeah, yeah. But you left Rory and the Hurricanes. I did. I was invited by Brian Epstein a couple of times to sit in 
Uh, this is with, with the Beatles. With the Beatles. I knew them, of course, when we were playing, and we got to know each other in Germany. But as you said, the Roaring the Hurricanes, they were a bigger name. We were the bigger band. And yeah. so why would a guy leave the bigger band to go Well, that's what band? everyone was saying. Are you sure? Because, <laughs> you know, they're... The Beatles at the time were like just a Liverpool band, but I loved John, Paul and George. I loved that front line. And if they were the last on, I would still be at the club a little happier and merrier. <laughs> but I would like watch the, the, the last gig. I loved that front line. It was exciting. And then I was asked to join. And I said to Brian, he called me Wednesday. I said, well, when do you want me to join? He said, oh, tonight. So I can't leave tonight. You know, I'm with a band, you know, we can't just dump the band. I'll leave Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I love this picture, it's not just the picture, it's the story you tell yeah. about how at that time you were still getting advisories as to when your music would play on the BBC. Oh, yeah, that was great because we were touring England and, uh, you know, to have that piece of vinyl, I mean, you'll never understand how big that was to us, to have a record, you know. I mean, OK, we're playing to bigger audiences, but now we've got a piece of... A record, man! I mean, far out. And so, that you know, because of the BBC, we'd find the running order, and it'd be at 9.17, uh, they were going to play uh, Love Me Do or something. So Because we were all in the same car. A lot, uh, a lot of the time we were in a van with uh, Mal driving, or we were in a car and Paul was driving. And we'd pull over because we, wow, it's on radio. You know, <laughs> it's too far out. It's so. It's like it was it's hard all to far imagine out. that now, right? Now it, it's impossible to. I imagine. mean, now there's probably a Beatles song playing somewhere in the world every minute of every day, every second. <laughs> yeah, so they say. Yeah, and, and isn't there that you great were though? not that long ago, 50 years ago, pulled over the side of the road, road going, to listen to ourselves. God, there we are. Wow, and there we are now. They're great. I think they're born. I don't know what Beatles means. Um, it just means us. <laughs> well, we skip ahead a yep. couple of years, and you've been with the Beatles. It takes off. It takes off. It is, takes off. Put it mildly. It takes off in Britain. Yeah, yeah. And then you come to the U.S., well, February 64. We well, we did. And we start seeing these pictures that, that you took. Um, and it's kind of like cinema verite, right? It's the, it's the boys in, in their hotel rooms, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, this... You've got George and, and yeah. John eating. Well, it is. We spent a lot of time in hotel rooms. And you see the one with Paul on Mal's back. Right. You know, I mean, it was just stuff and John... But this is when life is changing, rapidly. Yeah, very much so. We, the, most of the front load are actually pictures in Paris. And there's one great one I love where on the street, John is standing on the street surrounded by Parisians, <laughs> and I'm taking his picture. And if you look, nobody's taken any notice of him. It was nothing like walking down the steps of that plane in New York. New York was one of the most incredible moments of my life. Um, that we're actually in the land of where all the music we love came from. You, you talk about walking down those stairs. Oh, no, I... At that plane and yeah. suddenly realizing that everything was going to be different from this moment on. Well, it was going to be different from that moment on, but we didn't know it was going to be quite as big. Right. We did not know that, but we were just like, wow, we're in America. And then we got on a train to Washington, the first live gig in America. And the press are with us. And I've got some photos of the press mm. on the train. And they told us they came to actually shit on us. <laughs> and because, you know, they're from England, who do they think they are? And uh, they shouted, you know, the New York attitude. They were, like, loud. And we're from Liverpool. We can shout back. We have no fear of shouting at you either, brother. And he said, that's what endeared us to them. Yeah. And that's how it started. Well, the Sullivan Show had that massive audience, massive appeal. I mean, I was sitting yeah. there, I was 16 yeah. in Canada watching that. Yeah, yeah. And, and things did change overnight. I can they remember, did. you know, that was a Sunday night, going to school on the Monday. Kids who had been wearing kind of greaser hairstyles on Friday <laughs> were, <laughs> were mop tops on yeah, Monday. Yeah. yeah. And it just suddenly happened. Yeah. Well, you know, the clothes became as important as the 
the boys and the music, it was all one. Why, why was it happening? Have you well, ever, have you ever tried to figure that out? No, you can't plan it. You know what I mean? You cannot say, oh yes, and we'll go Monday and this will happen and that. We arrived, we had a great reception, we had the Sullivan show, 70 million people watch the show. And we're always so proud that the crime rate was down that night. <laughs> Because they're all in watching us. They're absolutely marvelous. I'm so proud, and I'm so proud of the, uh, the Toronto teenagers as well. I think they behaved themselves, and they really showed a lot of enthusiasm. And I hope we made the boys very well. I think they're grand. Marvelous. 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 And then I just shook Ringo's arm, and then Paul came by, and I hit a grill and we kissed him. And he was so good about it. <laughs> Let me ask you a couple of what, you know, what we call short snappers. That's what you call them. Yeah, but they're, they're sort of tend towards one word or two Just word answers. Um, favorite song? Of all time? Yeah, it doesn't have to be one of yours. Yeah. Tell the truth, Ray Charles. Why is that? I love it. I love the live version. Just always blowing me away, but in all honesty, that's very unfair because there's so many songs. Mm. You know? And there's so many artists, so who's the yeah, favorite, so who's you, the you favorite know, people artist? People say, oh, put your top ten down. I can't. Yeah. I just cannot do that. There's mm. no like, oh, I just like this. But it's a really broad spectrum of music I love, which favorite, I passed on to my children. Favorite Beatle? Beatle song? Favorite Beatle? No. Okay, favorite no Beatle song? There's no answer to that because it you know, we were like brothers, so sometimes uh, one of them was pissing me off. <laughs> <laughs> um, day in a life. Uh, is there a song, know, is there a Beatles song that you go, you know? Paperback writer, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, which way you want to go? Yeah. We were evolving. Are there any that you say, you know, I've, I've actually heard that enough? No. Seventy-five. I am. What does that mean to you? It means I'm getting old. It means we're all getting old. Yeah. But you don't look seventy-five. You don't I, sound seventy-five. Well, they, you don't because that's the new way we look after each other. I mean, when I was a lad, you know, anyone of forty was like your granddad. You know what I mean? It was those like old people, and that's how it works. But uh, suddenly you find yourself here. You are. You know, you're one of those people. I've lived in this town both sides of the track. One with a lot of uh, medication <laughs> mm. and one with a lot of broccoli and blueberries. And you like the broccoli and blueberries. I do that now. And I'm still touring. Exactly. Mm. And you're tour touring in many parts of Canada. It's not like you need to do this. I mean, It is what I need. I need to play. But you don't need it for the money. No. You need it for the... If I needed money, I wouldn't be going to Canada. <laughs> Wait, you don't like Just our money? Just having fun, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Even the cameraman's laughing. Oh, you have to get a bit real because it's your show. <laughs> what, um, but what do you get out of it? What is you it know, about? I was 13 years old and I was very ill and uh, I was in hospital and to keep us busy, this woman would come in and give us uh, tambourines, little drum, uh, you know, uh, maraca. Anyway, she gave me a drum and I wouldn't be in the so-called band unless she gave me a drum. And that was my dream, to be a drummer. And I made my first kiss out of biscuit tins and firewood, the sticks, and, you know, I didn't want to play piano or anything else. I only wanted to play the drums. And I still love to play. I love to play. It's been great talking to you. Hey, thank you, and don't forget to mention the book. Which book would that be? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this book. <laughs> Peace and love, everybody. See you in Canada.